This video is sponsored by Decal Works, offering 10% off all graphics to retail customers. Use the promo code RX10 at decalmx.com to receive 10% off your graphics. What is going on, everybody? How's it going? I'm Chris Kiefer. Welcome to another Racer X video. And my, oh my, feast your eyes on what I have in front of me. I'm excited. This has been a long time coming. Basically, it's a Justin Brayton replica, number 10, muck off, Sierra 450 Honda. Lots of backstory on this bike, but I'm gonna give you guys a little synopsis real quick. So, when I first got my test bike, my 2021 Honda Sierra 450R, the muck off team didn't have a lot of parts to get Brayton um, engine to develop, to practice on, so, I gave up my test bike, let Brayton have my engine, and let Jamie over at Twisted Development uh, develop some things for Justin. Now, today, I finally got my engine back. We built this bike. Showa came out here and built me a set of A-Kit suspension. So basically, this is a replica, exact replica, of JB's engine spec for Supercross with my spec for outdoors. And it's kind of a blend of both coming together. And we're gonna talk about it here today at Glen Helen. And we're gonna go over what JB likes in his engine and what I like in suspension for this bike and give you some uh, little tips and tricks that you can do at home to your CRF 450 Hondas to make them a little bit better. But a very interesting build. And it's not so much a garage build, it's just something fun that I wanted to bring you guys out there because let's face it, a lot of you guys wonder what it's like to have one of the best engines out there in the 450 Supercross class. And let's face it, Justin gets great starts. Jamie knows how to build, how to build an engine. And uh, we're gonna talk about that here today. We're gonna bring him in later, tell you guys at home what it was like to build Justin's engine, what he looks for, and uh, how much man hours really goes into building one of these factory-ish engines. So stay tuned. I'm gonna go ride this thing. I can't wait. I'm trying to cut this thing short so I can go ride. So we'll be back. We'll talk about it. We'll bring Jamie in here and uh, we'll break everything down. That is JB10. Weege, eat your heart out. Right, guys just got off the muck off honda crf 450r to the right of me jamie ellis from twisted development he is the man responsible behind this engine but more specifically he is the man behind the muck off hondas that you see on tv us fans want to know what justin likes i know i do that's kind of why i wanted to do this video this is exactly it comes from the supercross side of things justin's race bike so jamie tell us what is involved in building this engine and what does Justin want from his engines? And then I will get to what I feel on the track. So with Justin Brayton riding Supercross for as many years as he has, it's been a long time yet, and he, he really knows what he wants from the aspect that he wants a lot of connection to the bottom. He wants to run a really small rear sprocket. He believes that that's a huge advantage on the start. Sorry if I just blew you out, Justin. But <laughs> in all reality, those are a couple things that we like. He takes really big gulps with the throttle. I mean, he really on off, um, loves the clutch. He clutches, jump faces, landings, whoops, you name it. I mean, he knows exactly the way he wants to ride and he doesn't want the bike to change. You know, he doesn't want to change. He wants the bike to change. So it's been a really fun year setting up this bike for him and had some challenges. And, you know, this bike is one of the bikes that we've been using to kind of develop everything we had going on is the Chris Kiefer special. I guess we got, didn't really talk about that. So at the beginning of the year, um, I had, well, it says, 
9-28-2020 is when uh, basically I got this bike. I handed it over to Jamie because the team needed some parts, needed some development. So I've been missing my motorcycle for quite some time. Well, with the COVID-19 pandemic and everything else that's going on, you know, bikes were scarce. Uh, dealers were out of them. People were scrambling. And uh, it was one phone conversation away as it typically goes. But, you know, luckily Chris was nice enough to loan us his motorcycle to develop and, and have a spec ready. So Justin had a bike that he went and, you know, had out in North Carolina there riding at Club MX. And it was nice that we already had a platform for him to come out. You know, we tested three days straight at the Honda test track. It was a million laps for Justin. I was trying to slow him down, but he, he does a lot of laps. He loves it. And, um, and after all, you know, this is the platform that we kind of started with to get the whole development ball rolling, so. So where are we at now in comparison to what this is, and then we'll lead into what's involved in this. So I would say where we're at now is we're a little bit more aggressive on the piston side. Um, I know if I built you the exact same thing JB had, <laughs> I get a lot of heat for making aggressive engines with you. So <laughs> I, uh, I had a key for mapping this thing already, and I, I also had it kind of dumbed down. To, Cause I, I mean, I've been working with you for a while. I know what you want and I know what you don't want. So, um, so to be fair, you know, Justin's bike is a little bit more aggressive than yours. Yeah, so uh, Jamie and I came out and did some things on the FMF muffler side, tried to, uh, went through a few mufflers for Justin before the season started, because I kind of know what Justin likes as well. Jamie's correct, he likes a lot of bottom end. Um, he likes to run first gear a lot, I know that. And um, in fairness, he did pick and also sway the production FMF muffler of what you chose. So. Knowing what Justin would want is, is also helped a lot of other companies come to where this motorcycle sits today. Right. So, All right, so what's involved in this engine? What did you have to do to get this thing to where it's at? And uh, it's tough for me to sit here and just talk highly about this engine and not say anything negative, but I told Jamie earlier, this is probably, it is, the best Honda that I have ridden in about two to three years. And I've ridden a couple. So what's involved in this engine to make it like this? So in this current engine configuration, you know, we split the cases, do a little bit of housekeeping. We put our own rod in it and shave the base of the cylinder a little bit, raise the compression some. Um, cam timing and everything. Uh, you have to remember this motorcycle is so brand new that with everything that's going on in the world today, companies overseas backed up, everything going on. So fortunately, the Honda platform left us with a really good engine to modify. So once you take the engine apart, check all the math, see what your clearances are, see where you can move stuff. Uh, obviously, this is the first hand ported head that we use the CNC spec, all of the rest of the heads. So the first engine always goes in development stages. Uh, I, I didn't swing for the fence even with the first one because of the, the lack of parts. So, you know, you have to take the approach that you're going to hit the nail on the head hard. And luckily, that's what we did. So this exact same engine configuration with a stronger piston from JE Pistons is what we came out and, you know, got podiumed at the second round with. Uh, bottom end, unchanged on this on this engine, but Justin um, has a little bit different bottom end. And this engine right here, it's just the shift fork has changed. Is that what you told me? Because what I noticed right when I got on the track, if you guys are at home, um, with stock engines, it's a little bit vague sometimes when you shift. And when I got on the track and started accelerating up to um, Talladega here at Glen Helen, I just noticed how more just positive it felt every time I shifted. Yeah, so that's one of the things we do just for general housekeeping as well. Like I said, it's not going to be overly performance-based, but we modify the shift detent mechanism in every, every engine we build to have a firmer shift. And what that does is it kind of forces the dogs together and less rounding over time and, and just going to keep the transmission a little bit more sturdy. Recluse clutch on here, but uh, the team also, I, what, from what I've heard, uh, they like the stock Nissan unit, right? Yeah, the stock Nissan unit has been beautiful. Uh, we tested a couple different blades of it, but at the end, Justin really loves the really far out engagement point that the stock unit has, um, as he does use the clutch as a weapon. You know, it's, it's not in his pocket, it's in his hand. So that was really important, and it, it didn't take long to go back right back to the standard clutch lever. So Justin has a little weave of parts that you and I can buy at home, and then there's stuff at, on his bike that you can't. Obviously, he has factory triple clamps, he has a factory fork and shock, and he has factory brakes. He's really anal about his brakes, right? Yeah. Yeah, so the thing that Justin wants about his brakes is he wants it to be almost to the grip, but really touchy and firm. So 
luckily, you know, being connected with HRC Honda has given him, and, and he's ridden there for a couple years, so he, uh, he has access to that stuff, and that's kind of something. His bar height positioning and his front brake lever is something he's not willing to compromise with. So luckily, we just moved him straight over from his factory Honda stuff over to this motorcycle, so we didn't have to do a whole lot of guesswork. So for the 2021 Honda CRF 450R platform, I've been critical of it. A lot of other media um, outlets have been critical of it. Obviously, in the stock form, ECU is a little bit dirty, a little bit rich feeling. Um, the suspension is really soft. So I wanted to leave some stock components on here. I didn't want to go full bore on this thing because um, I was quite frankly, I was kind of scared of having too fast of an engine from Jamie. I was like, you know, in my 40s, I'm not Justin. I'm not jumping triples out of a corner. I want something that's stronger, easier to ride. And uh, so what I did, as I called upon Showa, the guys at Showa, gave me some A-Kit stuff, went out and did some valving specs. So I got a firmer setting, and uh, it is on the firmer side. But for here at Glen Helen, when you're coming down hills, it holds the bike up, and that helps this chassis. Some of you guys may be thinking, hey, you're going a little firmer on the fork and the shock. That's going to hurt the chassis even more because it is a firmer feeling chassis. But for me, it causes less movement of the bike, which doesn't make uh, the chassis load and then unload. So for me, you get a little bit more stability. Now, to the engine. Surprise, surprise, Jamie. He knows that I like a smooth, broad, long power. I've been telling him this for I don't know, how long I've known Jamie. So I was expecting the thing to be explosive, a little bit hard to ride, and we're gonna be out here all day trying to detune this engine. We did one ECU change, and let me tell you, with the engine that is in this thing, I could actually use third gear, and I wasn't able to do that in stock form. I could lug the bike, um, and recovery is instantaneous. I can little fan of the clutch, and it's back in the RPM, and it makes the bike feel lighter. Through corners, it's a little bit more stable. I feel like I have more bite to the ground, and that is all because of this engine package. In order to make this thing have a lot of rear wheel connection, um, I brought these parts out here for Jamie to talk about, but this is one of the key components, I guess, right? Yeah, so with um, the battery being located underneath the whole motorcycle to lower the center of gravity, that's Honda's engineer's ideas, uh, it, it left for a, a longer air box and a lot of opportunity. So what you're gonna see here is the standard Venturi. It has three bolts, bolts right in. Oh, so from this side, you're gonna have a little connection and there's gonna be a throttle body and go into the head. So the bolts are really cool because it left us with a lot of opportunity. So we did a bunch of CAD design drawings on flow analysis and everything and came up with this 3D printed intake Venturi. So if you remember the Moto Tassinari setup where interchangeable tubes, you could change the length from short to small to big to flat to whatever you were looking for. So having that same technology today with 3D printing has been one of the cool things. So instantaneously, we probably printed six or seven different designs, uh, went through dyno testing, went through track testing, and this is ultimately the one we came up with. So one of the other interesting things about this part is, I don't know if it ever makes production. Um, in, my, in our opinion, it's gonna have to be probably molded, plastic molded, five to seven grand. And then at that part, the cost analysis to how many we're actually gonna sell to even recoup our own investment back. Honda changes this thing in 2022. We don't, we can't predict the future. So this is going to be kind of one of those cool parts that I'll probably save one and just hang on to for conversation piece. Uh, like I said, haven't decided if it's going to be production yet, but it uh, definitely has made a big impact in what you're feeling as far as connectivity. For me, I would sell it just because of the simple fact of <laughs> how good it does feel. And I know there's a lot of other variables within the engine to make it like this, but man, second gear is super long, easy to ride. It doesn't rip your arms out. I had a problem with this bike in stock form to be, it's, it's smooth, but yet it still has a little bit of a hit um, later on when I start to get tired that it was hard for me to get used to. This thing is so smooth and easy to ride in second and third gear, and then I have the option to, if I wanna be lazy, and I, and I am tired, which happens a lot, I can just lug this thing in third gear and it doesn't rip my arms out. Um, I like that. Glen Helen is known to be slippery. I can run third gear, roll the throttle on, and the Pirelli tires hook up awesome. And uh, it's just a very, it's a different feeling from what I've felt from a Honda before. I feel like I'm in control the whole moto. And I can't say that at times from the stock um, piece that I had back in October, right? But maybe also too, this might be one of the only motorcycles we did a full analysis testing at stock with just an ECU and pipes. 
And then we're here back at Glen Helen today with the modified finished product. So this might be your and I first from start to finish, full blown, where we were stocked to where we are today. I guess that is true, and that's kind of how race teams go about it. Hey, you start in the stock base and you work your way and figure out what you like. So um, overall, for me, I had a smile on my face all day long. I don't think I've been as happy to ride a Honda as I was today. So um, thanks to Jamie at Twisted, thanks to Justin Brayton, thanks to Shoah, and uh, man, it's fun to dive into some of these riders' bikes and their minds to see how they ride. We could talk about this thing for 30 minutes, but uh, I wanted to say uh, I'm impressed, Jamie. It was very cool. Thanks, buddy. It's been a great process, and I really appreciate you loaning me this motorcycle to be able to do the development. And uh, I know JB's very thankful too. So it's it's a crazy world we're living in, and you just do what you can when you can. And this is the product of hard work and and a lot of dedication, so it's been a really fun process, and thanks for coming along with us. All right, guys, so we'll see you back here with another video. I'm sure there's going to be plenty more to come. RacerXOnline.com. Don't forget, 12 issues, 30 bucks. you got print out there still. Go subscribe. Lots of cool things inside the magazine that you can't see here right on our website. So we'll see you on the next go-around.